Hey, what's up? This is Dr. Alan here from the Dr. Eye Health Show. And this video is gonna be a little different from what we normally produce here. Uh, I'm very thankful and just grateful for how successful the channel has been over the last three years when I started it. Uh, we've helped so many people learn about the eyes, their diseases, treatments, different tips and tricks to help them see better as well as, as, well as help people find vision products that will actually help them. And that's really kind of the heart and soul of this channel and why I even started making this content. So again, I'm super grateful and thankful for all of that. Also been pretty lucky that people have asked and showed interest in me and my journey and why I chose optometry and really my medical journey and how I got to be an optometrist and everything. So my name is Joseph Allen. I go by Dr. Joseph Allen instead of what my best friends call me, which is Joey. And I go by that in clinics. If you ever see me as a patient, you'll, you'll hear me introduce as Dr. Joseph Allen because I know I look young <laughs> and everyone thinks I'm grad just graduated high school or something. But uh, even though I'm 32 at this time, uh, I feel like if I call myself Joey or introduce myself as Joey, I think I look even younger. I didn't get into optometry or healthcare uh, for a lot of the same reasons I know a lot of other people do. I know a lot of people get into healthcare because they have parents or a family member of some kind that is in a specialty of healthcare, whether it be nursing, they're a medical doctor, they're a dentist, etc. I got into optometry probably because uh, one, my parents wore glasses and pretty thick glasses, in fact. And then I ended up uh, requiring glasses at the age of like six or seven years old. I was already pretty nearsighted, thanks to uh, nearsighted, thanks to my mother who is uh, about a minus 10 diopters. So, uh, thanks mom. <laughs> kind of a bigger moment that directed me toward optometry was that in junior high, uh, well, before junior high, I was pretty lonely. I was a lonely kid, sat inside a lot, basically read uh, books, watched movies, played video games all day. And they, my parents encouraged me to get into sports. So uh, I said, okay, I'm gonna pick football but it's kind of tough to play a contact sport like football if you're wearing thick Coke bottle glasses. So my mother thankfully uh, got, got me introduced to my optometrist and discussing contact lenses. And this is something that I try to remember every time I fit a kid into contact lenses because it, it just can change somebody's life dramatically. Being able to go from this nerdy, dorky kid with thick glasses to all of a sudden being able to play sports and make friends and then have this self-confidence boost. I had so much more self-confidence in myself that girls started paying attention to me and getting uh, affection or just any sort of attention from the opposite sex at the age of 13 in junior high was like the biggest deal to me. So whenever uh, I would go see my dentist, I was not a big fan of them poking and prodding at my teeth or fitting me in retainers or braces, but I loved seeing my eye doctor. Uh, everything they did, from the refraction uh, to all the instruments they used, to just talking about astigmatism and me needing weighted contacts to fit for my astigmatism. It was like black magic to me. I just loved it and was curious about it. And it was so cool. So in my later years of high school, when everyone's asking, hey, what are you going to do? I knew that if I was going to be anybody, that I wanted to be like my eye doctor. So uh, that's kind of where I set my needle towards north in a way. Now, thankfully, I was able to reach out to my optometrist and ask him about what his life was like. What was school like? How did he become an optometrist? And he even invited me to shadow him at the clinic, which was uh, a great thing. And I strongly encourage anybody who's thinking about any healthcare profession, talk to somebody that you can get a hold of that does that as a job and ask if, they can, if you can shadow them because you you'll learn a lot from that. But it ended up turning out that the eye doctor that I was shadowing, his name is Dr. Mike Sufka, and big shout out to him. He not only was my eye doctor who fit me in contact lenses and kind of inspired me to go into optometry, but he even went to the same undergraduate college that I ended up going to, which was the St. John's University and College of St. Benedict in central Minnesota. Now, grade-wise in undergraduate college, uh, I did pretty well overall. The early first year, uh, I kind of struggled, mainly in biology. And I think it was partially because, one, I wasn't that interested in learning the basics of biology, cells, uh, the different organelles, and the basic organisms, single-cell organisms, and, and animals. I was more interested in just human anatomy, 
human physiology. And those are more of advanced courses that you take later in your undergraduate courses. So uh, I, I kind of struggled with just keeping attention and not falling asleep in class, things like that. Uh, I was also wasn't just, I, my brain wasn't geared toward learning and memorizing science. I was more geared and really good at reading history books and writing papers. So it was a big gear shift for me and I had to relearn how I learn. And finally in the later years of college, I started figuring it out. And that's when I started setting the curves on tests and doing very well. So early on, my GPA wasn't the best, but by the end of the undergraduate college, I don't even remember what my GPA was, but I know it was uh, like a 3.6 or something like that. So it wasn't a 4.0 like a lot of other students are going into healthcare professions, but uh, I did overall fairly well. Now a big time for me, uh, specifically in my journey, was around my sophomore, junior year of undergrad, because I did two things. One, I went back and shadowed my optometrist again. This time shadowing, not only did I get to have visually already kind of understand what was going into, but he encouraged me to shadow not just him as an optometrist, but shadow another doctor, an ophthalmologist, which honestly, as a young kid, I didn't even know the difference between an ophthalmologist and an optometrist. And I should probably do a video on that. I should probably encourage, I'll get one of my ophthalmology friends to join me on here and we can kind of go into it together, like the differences in our professions. But what I ended up doing was shadowing an ophthalmologist where I got to go into the operating room and watch an invasive surgery there right in front of me. I watched cataract surgeries for most of the morning and it was fascinating and I loved it. Except that when they finally brought like a kid out to do strabismus surgery, they had a young kid who needed an eye muscle to be resected where they cut the muscle and reattach it. And in cataract surgery, you don't really see blood. There's not really blood and gore in cataract surgery. It's all very technical and all very tight knit and fascinating. But as soon as I saw blood and saw them pulling apart more of the, the orbit and everything like that, my stomach said no, <laughs> and I ended up uh, getting wheezy and basically fainting, passing out in the operating room. And so that was uh, just kind of a, a lesson learned that, hey, maybe doing invasive surgery wasn't for me. So that ended up solidifying my decision that no, I don't wanna go be an ophthalmologist and do invasive surgery. I instead wanna do optometry and be a clinician uh, doing all the clinic work. And then after that experience, around that same time, I ended up getting introduced to a short uh, kind of three-day event out on the West Coast at UC Berkeley, which is called OptoCamp. And I, I'm not sure if it's still going on, I think it might be, but it was an opportunity for me to go out to an optometry school and basically experience optometry school for three days, sitting through lecture, kind of learning, again, all the prerequisites and the how to take the optometry acceptance test and learning how to interview and just a kind of understanding what optometry school is gonna be like and how my, where my journey is gonna go for the next you know four or five years. And that was a really good experience and anybody who's thinking about optometry in the United States, I strongly suggest their program. Now to get into optometry school, not only do you need a fairly good GPA, but you also need to take the optometry acceptance test, the OAT. Now this test uh, is basically just like the MCAT. So I studied for it by reading, going through like all these kind of test books that they sell, these test prep books. But I also read through uh, one or two MCAT books that all my other friends who were going into medical school or applying for medical school, they were reading through those. So. Again, it's all kind of the same stuff. So when, if again, if you're somebody or you know somebody who's gonna be going into optometry, I suggest uh, prepping for it by reading all of those different test things uh, and just getting ready for it. I didn't score amazing. I scored better than average on the OAT, but I did score 100% uh, on the reading comprehension section, uh, which kind of just shows that my specific learning set I can go to a lecture and do okay, but if I sit down and read like a textbook or if I read a journal article, that's how I really learn the material. And so that sort of skill is something that I uh, really kind of owned in on and I think kind of carried me through not just undergraduate college, but optometry school as well. So when it came to applying to optometry school, I applied to probably like six schools uh, and got invited to a lot of interviews. 
Uh, but the one school that uh, I ended up really being attracted to and ended up going to was all the way down in San Antonio, Texas. It's part of the University of Incarnate Word Rosenberg School of Optometry. And it's a newer school. Uh, and the But what, what really attracted me to it was that it, it felt very comfortable. I felt welcomed there. They knew who I was. They knew my interests. Um, the university I went to for undergraduate was very similar. It gave the same feel as the school down in Texas. And when I went down there to interview, I was like, oh, this is nice. Minnesota's freezing cold. I'm down there at like November, December, and it's still like in the 80s, 90 degrees. So uh, I'm like, this is a place I could study. So I ended up going there and optometry school is pretty tough. Uh, actually, it's very tough. There's a lot you're learning, both uh, mathematics and the optics, the physics, but also learning all of the instrumentation, all the different instruments we use during the exam. You're learning all of physiology, anatomy, you're learning pharmacology, and we're not just talking about the eyes, I'm talking about the whole body. So that's a big thing people confuse. They're like, no, optometry school is a lot about the eyes, but the first two years of optometry school is the same as the first two years of pharmacy school and dentistry and medical school. You're basically learning old medicine and you have to understand the whole body from the feet to the top of the head, skin, cancer, kidney disease, heart disease, you have to learn all of those basics, both of physiology and pathology and the pharmacology to treat those. So I took years of pharmacology courses, not just on eye medications, but pills to treat uh, infections, as well as kidney disease, as well as cancers and all these different things. You have to learn uh, all of this stuff just to get through the basics. And again, you're learning all of this while simultaneously required to go in after hours to learn all these extra instruments and get proficient and good with them so you actually know what you're doing when you start seeing patients. While living there in San Antonio, uh, I basically was a study person. I basically went, I was studying all the time, uh, whether we were in class and I was going home and constantly reading and studying. Uh, so I did, I did fairly well uh, in school and I was pretty proud. I did graduate. Uh, with magna cum laude and the salutatorian, so meaning I took second in my class. So uh, GPA-wise and just grade-wise, I did very well. Now, another big part of my journey was that when I got into optometry school, I started learning about all my professors and all these people who are just like geniuses and mentors that I look up to. They all did this thing called a residency. And if you don't know what a residency is, this is, uh, you're, you've already gotten your degree and you technically are a doctor, but you are getting like accelerated, advanced, hands-on training. And you usually have a mentor above you who's teaching you kind of at the same time. So in optometry, residencies are optional. And I think, I don't know the exact statistics, but only about one third of optometrists go on to do residencies but it allows you to kind of subspecialize, whether it be specialty contact lenses, cornea, maybe surgery, surgery co-management, or perhaps pediatrics, or vision therapy, uh, traumatic brain injury, low vision, there's a lot of different subspecialties. So I myself uh, looked up to these mentors and thought, wow, they're so smart, and I wanna be the best doctor I can be no matter what, so I guess uh, add on an extra year of residency for me to my, uh, you know, my already eight years of education. So I ended up applying and going into residency, and I went to the VA Medical Hospital here in Minneapolis, which is kind of a primary care, has some low vision, traumatic brain injury, uh, and being in the VA, it's very much heavy in ocular disease. So I got to see some really insane cases uh, every single day, and it was a tough, tough residency experience. Now I know this video is already getting long, um, so maybe I won't go super in depth into my experience in residency, but if people really want to know, uh, leave some likes and comments in the section. Uh, and then, it, you know, if people are really interested in it, maybe, maybe we'll be able to make a video for you guys. But after residency, uh, I ended up working in private practice and I ended up having some experience working at a commercial place for a short time, which I found out just wasn't for me. I ended up working at a senior home, traveling around in kind of a mobile eye clinic, doing eye exams for the elderly for a short time. And then uh, ultimately working in private practice, uh, 
I kind of got to that point where I was like, my favorite part of seeing patients and the eye exam is explaining to my patients the different diseases and helping them kind of have that aha moment that they can do things just in their lifestyle to improve their eyesight or to protect themselves from having vision problems in the future. And I thought, you know what, if there was just something like a TV show about eyes and vision and, and something that would help people, uh, that would be amazing. <laughs> and I uh, kind of realized if anyone was gonna do it, uh, it was gonna be me. So that was kind of end of 2017 when I started having that realization. And that's kind of when the concept and the idea for the Dr. Eye Health channel uh, began. And I'll tell you, when I first started the channel, I didn't know what I was doing. I still, you know, somewhat don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I'm very much self-taught in terms of how the cameras work, the lights, the sound, the editing. Almost all of this is all done 100% just by me. So uh, when you ever watch these videos and you're like, wow, what video editor are you using? What, what company are you using? I'm like, no, that, that's me. Uh, I'm in the process of building out my team so I can start making more content rather than just one video a week. I'd really like to push it to being like two or more because uh, there's just so many topics. There's so many great questions that you and other viewers are reaching out and leaving in the comment section. And it takes a lot of time and work to make these videos and to do them right and make them scientifically accurate and, and the research into different products. Uh, it does, there, there's a lot to it. And honestly, in the early days of the channel, within the first few months, I wasn't getting any viewers, any subscribers. I had like 16 subscribers who were all my friends and family, and that was all that was there. Uh, but uh, I just thought, you know what, this is something, if I can help one person, it's gonna be worth it. So I'm gonna keep doing these. I enjoy doing them. So uh, that's, that's again what I was doing. And then finally started catching on, and people started, again, commenting, liking, subscribing, and, it, uh, it started taking off. And it's been kind of just my mini project. And uh, so yeah, thank you. <laughs> but I really can't say thank you guys enough. Uh, if you've made it this far into this video, again, I know this is a longer video, but uh, I hope that you're getting a lot from this channel. If uh, I try to be really active in the comments, it's difficult for me to get to everybody, but I do encourage you, leave comments, hit a like button for me at the very least. Uh, you can reach out to me at any time. We do have uh, our, our different email lists as well as our website now that we've been building. It's kind of in the early stages, but we're working on it. If you want to check out the website for extra e uh, kind of blog information about eye care, vision, things that are coming out. We even have a newsletter now uh, that's going out every week that kind of inf informing people about new study findings and new products that are coming out, uh, kind of answering people's questions, common questions that we're getting. So if you want to get more information about eye health and just want to interact with us more, I highly encourage you to check out our website. We'll put that in the description below and even sign up for the newsletter if you'd like. But hey, thank you so much for watching this video and sticking around this long. I can't thank you enough for all the support that you've given me uh, and my journey through all this. And I hope I can continue to offer you guys and share my knowledge just helping you with anything vision related, whether it be explaining a simple disease, helping you uh, find a good pair of glasses or contacts, or even just being able to help you find or navigate your way to a healthcare professional in your area. Always keep an eye on it, and we'll talk to you soon.